Hey, long time no see everyone. This is Brandon Bias from ChichiChicken.com, back once again with the Photoshop tutorial. We had a request from one of our previous requestees, if that's even the right word. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember him from one of our other tutorials, Super Mr. Metallica. Uh, he gave us a couple text effects that he wanted us to make, and we actually decided to do one on his second image right here. But I'm actually not going to show you what that looks like because <laughs> it actually looks better than what I was able to make it into on my own. But all in all, it turned out good. And here's what it looked like in the end. And as you can see, this actually has quite a bit going on in there. We got the word ponage in the middle, mostly because I couldn't think of a better word to use. And it, it's kind of fitting. And we've also got some shards of diamonds in the background, and we've got, you know, paint splatters and all kinds of crazy, like, coloring and spots, and just all of this together looks really cool. So let's go ahead and jump into this advanced tutorial, shall we? So let's just size it down just for kicks and start up our new document. I'm going to start up a 1280 by 720 like usual. And instead of doing our usual black background, we're going to make a gradient. So we're going to change our foreground color to a dark gray-ish color. So maybe around there. And then our background color will be an even darker gray. So maybe somewhere around there. Just, just some dark gray colors. And we're going to turn those into a vertical gradient using our gradient tool. Just name that BG for now. And then we're going to make a new layer and we're gonna call this spotlight and then we're gonna reset our foreground and background colors to white and black and grab our brush tool and we're just gonna make it a nice big maybe 800 pixel large brush right here and I'm gonna zoom out so I can put the brush towards the top center so that maybe only a quarter of the brush is overlapping the canvas and give that a click and it will give us a nice little spotlight given onto our background right there and we're gonna make a new layer. We're just gonna call this uh we'll just call this a white light. And then we're gonna size down our brush to maybe uh four or five hundred pixels or so. And just give that a little smack in the middle right there. And we're gonna grab our move tool and transform our spotlight. And we're actually gonna click and drag this bottom right corner out while holding Alt and Shift. I'm pretty sure that's um command and option and shift on a Mac something along those lines I'm just gonna drag that out and bring this down to give that a little bit of a 3d look let's go ahead and drag these in holding alt and shift maybe a little bit more down and right there is actually looking okay okay so we've got our two spotlights let's go ahead and add in our text I'm just gonna type in ponage and if you want this font I will definitely be putting a link in the description for you because it's a it's a pretty neat font and it's free so why not use it huh okay so now that we've got our text typed out and it's in the center let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a drop shadow let's just uh, put this right there so we can see what we're doing I'm gonna amp up the opacity to 100 percent change the angle to 90 degrees change the distance to 3 pixels and the size to 10 pixels and that will give us a nice, just vertical, soft little drop shadow right there. And we're going to go to our bevel and emboss, change the depth to eh, around 327%, change the size to 1 pixel, and soften it all the way to 16 pixels. Now we got a little bit of a bevel and emboss there. And we're going to turn on our stroke, change the color to a gray. We'll just type in 727272, and that will give us a nice little gray change the position to center and that should be okay right there and I'm actually gonna close that up and duplicate it bring this below change the opacity to about 20 percent and then I'm gonna zoom in to 100 percent and nudge over that duplicated ponage layer just so we get a little bit of a 3d feel to it Alright, so now we've got our ponage the way we want it to be. Let's go ahead and add in our diamonds. And the way we're going to do that is actually make a custom brush. So let's go ahead and open up a new document. Let's make it maybe 400 by 400. And 
depending on the size of the diamonds that you want and you know, make it accordingly we'll hit okay and then go down here we're just gonna grab our polygon tool make sure we're set to shape layers four sides and then we're gonna change the color to that gray that we used before 727272 hit okay now we're just gonna click and drag from the middle so it fills pretty much the entire canvas and let go and then we're gonna grab our direct selection tool and we're just gonna manipulate these corners to go out to the top left and bottom right and we're gonna drag these corners in to make it that little diamond shape that we want so maybe about let's see right there looks just about right right there so as soon as you've got this into a sort of diamond looking shape go ahead and right click this layer and we're gonna rasterize it and we're gonna make this into a brush preset and we're just gonna call this diamond boom now we can close out of this we don't need it anymore so let's go ahead and make this layer right here above our white layer we will call it diamonds and then we'll head up to our brush tool make sure we're set to a white foreground color I'm just gonna go scroll down to the bottom because that's where our little diamond should be right there and then if you open up your little brush panel over here we're gonna turn on the shape dynamics and the settings for the shape dynamics that you're gonna use are a 100 percent size jitter control the pen pressure minimum diameter 0 percent angle jitter 100 percent control off roundness jitter 45 percent control off minimum roundness 1 percent and then for scattering we're gonna turn that on we're gonna set the scatter to both axes at 135 percent the control off the count to one count jitter 100 percent the control to fade with a setting of one and then just make sure airbrush and smoothing are check marked right there and then we're just gonna size down our brush to kind of fit the word ponage just click and drag and then just kind of play with the size a little bit let's, let's put a lot of smaller shards of diamonds around here makes it look a little bit nicer just boom click around boom 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 and maybe just one great big one just for kicks boom alright alright so now we're gonna go ahead and make a little bit of a shadow beneath the word ponage but we're gonna do that in a little bit of a bizarre way let's go ahead and go back to our default brush here and then make it about the size of the word ponage so I'm gonna make it about 200 pixels big kinda fits a little bit there and we're gonna make a new layer above the word ponage and we're gonna call this shadow but the way we're gonna do this is actually put in some colors so I'm gonna choose a green just kind of paint on it right there and we're gonna swap over to maybe a yellow color just give it a little bit of a right there maybe add in some magenta and then we'll just finish off the word with some red but let's actually let's add some yellow between these two just for kicks okay so we've got some random colors on there let's go ahead and give them a motion blur right there and we're just gonna set the angle to zero and set the distance to something maybe like 90 pixels and that will just kinda blur it left to right a little bit and then we're just gonna set the blend mode to vivid light and that's got some craziness going on there but we're gonna mask this a little bit so let's size down our brush if it, give a little click there now we can size down our brush just kinda mask it over the word ponage and then just get rid of any colors that are above it and that's the effect that we should be getting right there but we're actually gonna go ahead and move this up so that's kind of overlaying the bottom of the word ponage a little bit let me actually mask this out just a little bit more just get that out of there alright that's looking pretty good right there so what we're gonna do now that we've got these random colors below the word ponage we're gonna actually gonna add an adjustment layer and make it a black and white adjustment layer and what we're gonna do is actually just kind of start decreasing these values to make these uh, areas kind of a black but as you play with these you'll notice that sometimes it'll get a little bit too black and sometimes not black enough you kind of want the shards to show through a little bit 
and just kind of play with this until you get settings that you kind of like how they look. So I'm just going to toy with these until I get something that I like. Okay, so I'm kind of liking how that looks. Granted, it's a little bit choppy here and there, but eh, that's okay. I can always, you know, redo the effect if I don't end up liking how it looks in the end. So let's go ahead and just close this up, and we're actually going to add the actual coloring on the word ponage real fast. Let's make a new layer, and we'll call it color. Bam. And then let's grab our brush again. Let's size it up a little bit more to about maybe 300 pixels. I'm going to grab, let's try a light blue, kind of give it a little right there. And let's see, what else should we do? Let's go to a, another magenta, paint that in. Bring in our yellows again. And then finish it off with a nice solid orange. Boom. Then we'll just change this blend mode to color. And it looks pretty, pretty decent right there, actually. Not too bad. But in any case, um, I need to blur this a little bit, so let's go give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur. 20 pixels will actually do just fine. If you do it before and after, you'll see that it just kind of dampens the colors just a little bit, so they're not too overwhelming. They just blend a little bit better. And we'll hit OK. Go back to our Move tool, because I like having a little arrow right there. And the next step is to actually merge all of these together into one layer. But to kind of make sure that I have all of these to keep. I'm actually going to do a little shortcut that I learned that's Control alt shift e um, On a Mac, I'm sure that's like something along the lines of Command-Option-Shift-E, something around those lines. But if that doesn't work for you, then you can always just kind of right-click and merge visible or flatten image, something along those lines. We'll still get the job done, you just lose all of your layers if you need a go back and start over or something like that. So I'm actually going to call this layer sharpen. Actually, no. We're going to reduce noise. So with that, we're going to go to filter, noise, reduce noise. And these are the settings you're going to use. We're going to use a strength of 10, uh, preserve details 100%, reduce the color noise by 15%, sharpen the details by 60%, and remove JPEG artifacts. And we'll just hit OK. And then we'll sharpen things up a little bit, make them a little bit more interesting. And then we're going to duplicate this layer twice. We're going to turn this layer off and go to this layer. We're going to call this Blur because we're actually going to go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. We're going to set the angle to 90 degrees and the distance to 17 pixels. And we'll hit OK. And we'll set that to, let's see, I believe it's hard light that we need to set this to. There we go. And that just adds a little bit of contrast as well as that nice little motion blur effect to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then this layer we're going to turn back on and we're going to call this sketch. And with that we're going to go to, oh, actually before we do anything, we need to make sure our colors in the bottom left hand corner are set to white as your foreground color and black as your foreground color. Otherwise you're going to end up with something that looks really weird. So anyway, making sure you've got those colors, we're going to go to Filter, Sketch, Reticulation. And as soon as that's up, you can see we've got this interesting effect going on here. Just make sure your density is set to 50, your foreground to 0, your background to 5, and this is the general effect that you should get. And we'll hit OK. And then we're just going to set that to Color Dodge. And that should be it for that layer. Let's go ahead and add in our paintbrush. And then we're actually going to go ahead and set this to overlay. And then we're going to give this a little bit of a mask so that, let's see. Okay, so with all that, I believe you should be done with this entire project here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, but no stupid questions like, how do I change my foreground color? That's, that, that's just silly. But in any case, um, this was a lot of fun. I'm actually glad I made this tutorial, and I'm looking forward to more requests from you guys and giving you something else to work on. 
So thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.